Final B, Bay Area Music Promoter, all the conscious is something you hear about. This is the man behind that. Ryan O.B., you're a great guy, and he's a great inspiration to us. Take over the mic and say the coach young man. Well, um, a couple of years ago, uh, Doug O'Leary and Coach O'Leary gave me Coach Young's number, and then um, Coach and I had an hour long conversation that we talked about today. You know how much you meant. I love you and thank you for everything that you've done. Um, but the, the, uh, I, I had an answer three times. And I was sitting in bed one day reflecting on something he taught me, which was never ever in any circumstance. And that's something that he said to me and it always stuck with me in my mind. So I want to thank you for that. And I want to say to everyone in here, if you don't hear anything else, you gotta understand that most of the players in these teams were black and brown players. Alright? This man here, he's a white man, he's a Catholic, a very spiritual man. He legitimately cared about us. I always knew that, and I was his IWD, I was his assistant, and I would talk to him. He legitimately cared about me. And Larry Hardman, the story, um, he paid tribute to him. That's really just the young. He cared about the community, he cared about his students. Franklin Rice told me a story. Franklin, through his life, went through some things. And he said, Coach Shannon was there for him, and Coach Ferris. And so I just want to really, we can talk about football and all that. Yeah, we were undefeated. I was the, probably the 11th best starter on offense. So I was the last one to make on offense. I was probably here to start the three games before I got hurt. All that's great. The real thing is that this man here taught us how to be young men, and he cared about us. And, and he was there for us. And I think if we can do that for our young people, it can be a lot better. So again, Coach Young, I speak for everyone. Thank you very much. And we love you. Need him more. I'll see you as a running back, even though he was a standout locksmith defensive back. And all these men. All these men. All these men as well. Renzo, take the mic. Because 
I had a problem with that. Even when I got the sack tape, you don't have to choose to give you this or that. So uh, even after that she both, I was going both ways. He gave me that vision, Dr. Good. So but thank you. And I should have did this a long time ago. If I got you a jersey.
so there was always the opportunity for the next week. We used to talk before the game about the season as being hurdles, and uh, we had each team their hurdle to get to the next the next hurdle to finally get to the finish line. And uh, and you did a great job. That's what I remember about Oakland High football. That's what I remember about each and every one of you. Even though over time, I have to admit, I don't remember everybody's names. I was talking with my wife last uh, or this morning about, gee, it must have been oh, over the 13 years I coached here, probably 650 uh, players. <laughs> and uh, I felt bad because I couldn't remember everybody's name. There was a time where I could pretty much remember everybody and what position he played, and uh, it was exciting. I was excited for you. I'm excited for you tonight. As uh, maybe it's so I should be playing. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I'm excited as I look around the room and I see the camaraderie. Yes, the, uh, the, the idea that one team was better than another um, is unimportant because you were all brothers on the field. You are all been brothers through the years. And even now, what has it been? Since 1980? 20, 42 years? Yes. Yeah. 40, something like that. I'm supposed to be a math teacher, too. <laughs> <laughs> but anyhow, uh, this has been very heartwarming and moving for me to know that I had some small impact uh, in your life because you had a big impact on my life. Each and every one of you that came out and wanted to be a wildcat football it's interesting, I, after I retired, I went to work for a small Christian high school in Walden Creek called Green Christian. In fact, the Moore brothers, one of the three sets of twins on the football team, uh, one of the football teams, uh, they, they started the program out there. But anyhow, I, somehow I got roped into to coaching again. You know, I wasn't the head coach. Uh, you know, I was the, I don't know, they, they had me uh, doing the uh, defensive, uh, defensive backs, and I never felt comfortable with the defensive backs, they were too fast, and you told me to accomplish something together. I didn't accomplish it, you accomplished it. You were the ones that came together and decided what you wanted to do. We kind of guided you. But you were the ones that determined how you were going to uh, how you were going to handle it on the field. If you were going to listen, if you were going to be at practice, if you were going to do a grass drill, you're going to do a grass drill for an hour if necessary. And uh, you did. And some of those grass drills were very impactful. <laughs> 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 Both of them were mentioned uh, uh, tonight. Uh, one was after the potato chip incident. <laughs> uh, and uh, we played Penola. This was on a Thursday after the JV game at Fruitvale Field. We practiced all on the side. And then uh, we were going to get on the bus and somebody had taken the ladies' potato chips so we were on the bus. And uh, so we got off the bus and we took our rep uh, uh, being reprimanded at that point. And we had to play a game against Panola, which was a powerhouse. And uh, the next day, uh, we go out and we play Panola, and that was the one time uh, that I 
make it all in one. But nobody thought we could stay with them all. And we did. The other memory which brings a smile to my face, and I hope that is yours, is playing Granada the second year. It's mentioned tonight. Coach Young! And I need everybody from that 1980 team to come over here so we can give Coach Young his kudos, please. Everybody from the 1980 team. But on this note here, we were on a bus and we were about to go home from practicing on that hard field at Fruitville. And I know we were messing around on the bus. And Coach Young, what the hell is y'all doing? The black boys is going to kick your ass. Get off the bus. And he had third field. He made his new lockdown was a damn near hour. We went to Granada two days later. And we showed them what speed was. We were doing 40 to 15. And when we played Granada the second year, um, they were, they had uh, uh, Jack Trudeau, who was the uh, quarterback, went on to play in Illinois as their starting quarterback. They had a wide receiver, I, think, I can't remember his name. Grant. Grant, who's in there? Randy Grant. Randy Grant. Yes. Thank you. Uh, Randy Grant. And um, they were they were a team, um, and so they beat us the year before. They thought, you know, they I think they already had the W in the win column, and um, we came out with a beautiful night. Um, Smelling grass, yeah, real grass, um, and. Um, that was a joke. That was a very good one. <laughs> <laughs> so anyhow, uh, we came out and we showed them what uh, our football team looked like when they were determined. Uh, I had word the following day that the headlines in the Livermore newspaper was Granada High School finds out what life is like in the fast lane. Uh, 42 to 13 was the final score. I don't think um, uh, Nico uh, completed half of his passes. And uh, we just, uh, I remember that day, uh, uh, pretty phenomenal statistic was that uh, Wayne Porter. Uh, carried the ball uh, 10 times for something like 220 yards. With 11, 11 carries, 298 yards. Wow. <laughs> wow. Okay. Uh, 11 carries, 290 yards. Pretty much statistics on age. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, just to wrap this up, um, for the 13 years I coached and many of you here are. Uh, and over one of those 13 years. Thank you very much for your dedication. Thank you very much for your uh, perseverance, for your love. And really, it's all about love when it comes, comes, to, the, comes to the final analysis. How well do you treat each other? How well were how well you concerned? How well did you... Uh, stand behind somebody and help them up. And this is a group, as I look around the room, that did just that. In one way or another, you may not have realized it, and some of the things that were said about me tonight, I have, I have no idea that I even did those things. But thankfully, thankfully, we can, we can support each other. And you know, I'm glad to see that this is just the beginning. That you have a program that's going to support the kids here at Oakland High School. And they certainly need it. Every kid, especially after this horrific pandemic that has affected so many kids across our state, that uh, anything you can do as a group. To help them. 
will be much appreciated, whether you know it or not, down the line. At some point, those same kids will say, you know, there was some, there was some football players that I didn't even know that, you know, I got a scholarship, I got some help. Thank you for giving me that opportunity. And I also want to thank, I want to thank uh, Franklin, uh, especially for for this, and and for the lunch, by the way. And Harold, uh, we had a great time. Thank you a lot. Mario, who has talked to me over the years,
but I <laughs> y'all gonna call everybody. Uh, you push the envelope, Mario, uh, with the energy, and uh, I had something else going on today, but then he said, you know, Coach Young, and and I, I admire Coach Young, and I'm honored to be here. I and I set things aside to make it a point to be here. I haven't seen you in what 40. Four years, <laughs> but um, open high. This is exemplary of open high, though, because when I got here, I felt at home. I come from like East Oak, the uh, East Oak, so I didn't know any coming into high school. I didn't know then high school. I mean, junior high was over at ninth ninth grade. The way I knew about open high. After I was playing in football in the streets in East Oakland, uh, my, I had a I have an older brother who played for Fremont, and um, they had a game against Open High. So you know, naturally, I jumped the fence and I was on the field for this game at Open High, and I saw the organization of Open High. For me, it was either Fremont or Captain Box. I didn't want to do that because I came out of. Uh, uh, Lockwood Elementary, Hayden's Court. I was in that area. And I didn't even know Open High existed because it was so deep east. But then I saw the organization of the football team. So I chose my high school based on the organization of the football team. I didn't know the coach. But when I got here, it all clicked. I said, OK, I understand why. Because Coach Young had my utmost respect as a boy. When I came in, I came by myself. I came with a brother called uh, named uh, Michael Bubb. Yeah, yeah, me and Michael Bubb came together. Michael Bubb left for some reason. Castle Mop put the pressure on Oakland High. And I it was either you or Michael. Huh? Castle Mop put the pressure on Oakland High. It was either you or Michael had to go. Oh, is that right? Well, Michael left. <laughs> and I stayed. And um, we had a dirt field. But from playing in the street to a dirt field was a, was a plus for me. So it didn't bother me. It didn't look, school didn't look nothing like this. But Coach Young, I looked up to. He wasn't a man where you had to question him about his football and his motivation. So I didn't know uh, what position I was going to play. I knew I was you know, a natural athlete, I guess, but they didn't know where to put me. They called me over to the tight end side. Do you remember all this? Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> then I was a linebacker, and then I became a linebacker and a tight end. Yeah. Um, and then I played back in the very fair. Yeah, they were, you were close. And they shared me. <laughs> but, you know, at that age, I respected both of them. And young, Coach Young, when he said something, I didn't question it. And I, and I looked, as I looked back, and I didn't have anything prepared to say because it was so spare at the moment. But when I look back, the last time I played football was at Oakland High. After I finished, uh, well, I played football and basketball. That's why I said Barry. But um, I went over to, I had like 375 offers to go to school. Mm -hmm. But I went to University of San Francisco because that's when Cartwright was there and they were number one in the nation. So all the colleges that I, that I uh, visited, they wanted me to play both sports. But I, I chose basketball and USF didn't have a football team. So I went and played basketball. But I say all this to say what was instilled in me as, a, as an organized football player was, came from this man right here. Mm -hmm. And after I finished playing four years of Division I basketball, there was 14 professional teams uh, interested in, my, in me playing professional football based on what I did here at Oakland High School. So. And I credit that to, to the organization. The, uh, you know, he was, when he, when he, it was a face that he had. <laughs> I can't, 
quote. And I didn't, I never met the children. All I knew was Coach, you know, Wayne Young. So, but he had a face that you didn't want to argue with. <laughs> and it was, it was a look. Am I saying it right? Yeah. <laughs> 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 but it was a face. And you respected the look because you respected the man because the man was all about what he was doing. So he didn't have, I don't know what his outside interests were. I didn't, I didn't even know his family. I didn't know yet, but Coach Young was very uh, instrumental in whatever I did after football. I mean, after I left Oakland High. I played basketball, but I didn't know, you know, I had to feed the ball to Cartwright the whole time. <laughs> I didn't know I had to feed the ball to Quinn Daly after that. <laughs> so after it was all said and done, um, I had to reflect. I could have went to Golden State Warrior. I was a big point guard. Slash foot. I was a point guard. I was an outside linebacker playing point guard, really. <laughs> But it took time to realize that. It took time to realize. But after it was all said and done, I said, if I'm going to make a living playing sports, I got to do something I know naturally. And, and Coach Young and the organization here at Oakland High, uh, they didn't even know I played football in, at USF. They had no idea I was a football player. I went there and I started as a freshman. I started for four years at a point guard. So. At the end, there was Detroit Pistons. Uh, Isaiah needed a big guard to uh, feed him the ball and take some of the pressure because big defensive guards that could do that, just take the pressure off him. But Joe Dumas solved that problem. And so they didn't need to do me. But I went to Seattle Seahawks, Kenny Easley, uh, Jim Dorn, that era. And they didn't know what to do with me. I didn't play football. The last time I played football was under this man right here. <laughs> Are you following me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The last time I even touched a football is four years later when I went to Seattle. They didn't know what to do with me, but they knew I had athleticism and I, I could do whatever they was necessary to do. So, and Kenny Easley was a strong safety. And they tried to make me a free safety. But I was not a free safety. <laughs> I, was a, I was a natural linebacker. I liked the contact and so forth. So um, I went to San Francisco 49ers. Um, they didn't know what to do with me either, but they, they knew they couldn't cut me. They didn't know what to do with me, but they knew they couldn't cut me. So um, I played under some good coaches. Uh, When you get to be my age, you forget the coach. What was the coach in San Francisco? Walsh. Jim, I mean, uh, Bill, Bill, Walsh. Bill Walsh. Bill Walsh. I played under Bill Walsh. Walsh. Uh, the coach in uh, Seattle was uh, Chuck Knox. Chuck Knox. Now, I'm saying these coaches' names because I, when I see these, when I'm playing under these coaches, I equate that to what the last time I played football. Mm -hmm. They have the same mentality. Different level, but the same mentality. These are Hall of Fame coaches that, that you know, I couldn't question them. Then I went to Kansas City, got a lot bigger, because in San Francisco they had me do a few other things, but I went to Kansas City and I was 265 pounds, been pressing 500 pounds. I never lifted weights at open high. I never lifted any weight playing basketball. So, but I knew to, you know, to uh, to really compete, I had to do that. So the, my first NFL start, I was uh, line. I, they put me as a linebacker, but they had me at tight end too. Tight end I could do, but then I, everything that I've done in football, I reflected back to Oakland High. I had no other reference because I didn't play, and the only reason why I didn't really play college football. It's because I didn't like the coaches. I didn't like the way they were treating the players. I didn't like having my, I didn't want my face mask grabbed on. I didn't want to be yelled at 
unnecessary. I just didn't. At a, as a boy, at 18, I just didn't like that atmosphere because it wasn't matching what I was used to. So um, once I got to Kansas City, they wanted me at a tight end. They wanted me as a linebacker. I could cover. I became a three-down linebacker because I was an outside linebacker, a pass rusher that could cover because I was an outside, I was a point guard and an outside linebacker <laughs> at 265 pounds. And they were fascinated that I didn't lose speed. I was 4'6", 4 6 40 at 265 Oof. and I could cover. Two reconstructed knee surgeries. I didn't know that was coming. But my first NFL start in Kansas City, I was NFL player of the week, defensive player of the week. Replaced um, the then seven year veteran there. Uh, he left and I became the starting outside linebacker in Kansas City. But I say all of this is because when I reflect on football on that level, the only reference that I have is the time that I spent with Coach Young. The only reference. I didn't go to the big universe. I went, I visited them, Michigan. It was too cold. They had 80, he talked, brought me through this tunnel, and it was 80,000 seats with snow on it. This was the off season. I'm used to a dirt field <laughs> catching a yellow bus. Uh, <laughs> You know what I'm talking about. You remember that guy so, like you know, it took 20, 35 minutes to get up? Yeah, <laughs> that. I wasn't used to all that. So I, I made it about face and said, no, nah, I don't play here. I don't want to play in a big scene like this. I'm not used to it. So um, magic was at Michigan State. I was going to play basketball. But the coach said, I think it was Judge Heath coach. Yeah. Was that him? It was him. Yeah, we sat and he said, well, I can't promise you you're going to start. Not like, you know, magic is not. Now I understood that. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> no question, but I understood that. So uh, if I, I didn't have no guarantees. I wasn't going all the way out to Michigan with no guarantees. But there was other colleges. But I say all that to say when I got the phone call, and they were referencing uh, Coach Young. You know, something came over me. It was like, that was a special time. That was a special time. I mean, are you listening? I came from deep east. I didn't know Oakland High existed until I went to one game that my brother was playing in, but, you know, doing his thing, trying his best to do what he did. But I saw Oakland High in the organization. They had a quarterback that wasn't running the ball. He was passing the ball. So I said, well, if I'm going to leave junior high school and go play high school football, that's the program that I need to be involved in. I didn't know what position I was going to play because when you're playing football on the street in East Oakland, you play all positions. So, but whatever he saw, in me as a linebacker, that's where it starts. Coach Young, and it's sincerely, wrap it up, okay. Well, you called me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I understand though, I understand. But this is fair to go, I don't have anything rehearsed. But when, when I got the call that they were referencing, Coach Young, just the, the little bio that I gave, I had to come. I had to come, and I brought one of my sons with me. That's my, uh, I have two sons and a daughter. They couldn't make it, but that's all right. But um, yeah, Coach Young, is, you have a very special place with me, and you always have. I mean, I didn't visit, I didn't revisit, because uh, when you're young, you have goals, and you know, your goals move you and, and push you and uh, sometimes, sometimes you have a tendency to uh, forget. But this was my opportunity to say thank you for everything you've done for me. You have made a
just wanted to say this one thing. When, uh, when uh, Ken came up and, as a sophomore, he started as a linebacker. Uh, we were, and Eddie Gates. Yeah. 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 Sophomore linebackers on the varsity. Um, I can't remember who we were playing, but uh, uh, USC was playing Cal, and they they had a couple of scouts um, came to our game, and after after the game, they wanted they wanted to know if they could start talking to. Eddie Gates and McAllister because they were interested in recruiting him right there. They were just sophomores. And it was, I, I couldn't go on. They were hard headed. Hard headed. Well, I'll tell you why. Uh, a lot of people around the country uh, were uh, really taken with Kim. Uh, he said he had, uh, I don't know how many uh, uh, offers he considered for their, their university program. I guess uh, the last story about Kim was that uh, one day I was walking out of the gym and John Robinson and Paul Hackett uh, both future uh, coaches in the NFL came walking in. They were from USC, and they wanted to know if they could talk to Ken when he got him out of the classroom because they were interested. They were certainly interested in Ken uh, uh, going to USC. And, uh, by the time USC went out, oh, well, by the way, I have a subject that I'm working with Washington. Thank you, everybody. Um, but I want to give a, a tribute to a player that played on our team, Kel Nevins. Yes. Um, and, uh, if you saw in the area, he, he did a lot of great things as a coach. Um, and we're very proud of him. We we're very proud of him. That he was a part of this team and a part of the Wildcat family. Thank you, Coach.